Hi, I'm Nathan Feuerberg, writer and creator of Flies in the Jar. If you enjoy the show, it would be great if you could go over to iTunes or Podchasers and leave a review. Or, even better, just tell a friend. Flies in the Jar is a serialized radio drama. If this is your first time listening, it's advisable that you begin with episode one. Previously on Flies in the Jar. Here she is, Smith and Wesson Five Shooter. We just want to be able to defend ourselves. Sometimes you'll be moving cash, sometimes illicit substances. You do this alone. No friends along for the ride. Yeah, man, I got it. My first road trip. Are you excited? Yeah, I've never been up north. What seems to be the problem? I think this guy's been following me. We're here with resident Nick Siegel. Mr. Siegel, can you describe what happened? When I was going down the fire escape, I saw inside the first floor. There was a lot of smoke, but I could see three bodies on the floor. They weren't on fire or nothing. It was like someone knocked them out and then left them there to burn. And now, an all-new episode of Flies in the Jar. Flies in the Jar is based on true events. You want another uh, Dos Equis? Make it two. Or should I say Dos? I'm telling you, this guy Nick Siegel said he saw three bodies in the blood bank. You know, you can't believe everything that Nick says. Yeah, well, I was there. I saw the firefighters pull the bodies out of the building. Back in the day, we used to call that dude Nitrate Nick. This wasn't some kid you grew up with. What he says is true. Old Nick had a thing for poppers. One day he was using the bathroom up in here and a waitress walked in on him. She said he was huffing a jar of amyl nitrate with his finger up his butt. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's a great story. Really puts my mind at ease. You can't let some druggie get under your skin. (laughs) Yo, I'm not the crazy one here. There's a serial pyromaniac stalking our hood. Oh, snap. Happy hour ends in five minutes. Hey, it's still two for one, right? That's what it's been for the last ten years. All right, cool. Bring me two more beers and two more whiskey backs. Well, whiskey. What do you think? Yo, why are you ordering all that? I'm about to go catch the bus down the cliffside. All that talk about not running away? Now you're just going to cruise to Malibu? <laughs> I'm not hiding. Just spending a couple days with my girl. Eh, uh, Whatever. More drinks for me, bro. I'll see you when I get back. Flies in the Jar. Starring Lady Zen, John Jeffers, Kent Evans, and Clara Dunham. Acting consultant, Martin James Grappengetter. Sound mastering by Joshua Holloway. Produced by Lady Zen. Written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. So when I was younger, me and my friends had a habit of stealing car stereos. I never felt a rush like that, you know? When you break the window on a car and your heart just starts racing. And when you sit in the front seat unscrewing the bolts, the the, the adrenaline kicks in. I swear it's better than being high. It is understandable. People who come from a poor neighborhood must find ways to survive. Poor neighborhood? Nah, I grew up in Chevy Chase. My father makes like six figures. So you stole for fun? Not much to do in the suburbs when you're 16. That's horrible. What about the owner of the car? They must feel violated. Uh, I didn't say it was one of my brighter moments. You don't do it anymore? Uh, I'm 26. Did I tell you I have new work? 
Charles is taking me to his studio. I'm going to record a tape. Like music? It's a tape to teach America how to speak French. <laughs> Sorry, being an au pair is an all-time job. What are you doing? You can't have a pistolet around the baby. It's for protection. From what? There's nothing dangerous in Malibu. I already told you about the fire start. <sighs> You're probably smoking in bed. Just what? get rid of it. for the weekend is under this rock. You must be Mia's friend. I'm Charles. Well, hello sir, I'm Jimmy. You like ribs? I was just about to set up the barbecue. <laughs> I'll eat me some ribs, some pork chops, anything you put on the fire. My wife bought me a Weber, but I like grilling in the pit with wood. <laughs> that hole's big enough to build a bonfire. There's something virile about making a fire and tossing meat on it. You mind helping me grab some kindling? Lead the way. There's a can of gasoline and some matches over on the workbench. Are these your records framed on the wall? <laughs> My wife won't let me hang them in the house. Says they look like we're bragging. I'm like, you're damn straight I'm bragging. I spent a lot of time producing those records and I want our friends to know. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I got some friends who would sell their left lung to meet you. You into music? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not a musician or anything. I've got two tickets to the Tricky concert this Saturday. Would you like to take Mia? I didn't even know he was playing. I mean, that'd be awesome. I, I love trip hop. Hand me the gas. That's a lot of gas. Matches? fire. It doesn't differentiate between wood and flesh. It eats away at everything like a disease. It spreads without a thought or a conscience. Do what happened to your headphones? Well, I just thought that, you know, you might like to learn something as well. Shouldn't you be learning some beginner stuff like, Hi, how are you? Or... My name is Sanchez. Yeah, forget that. I don't want to sound like every other American. I want phrases you know that actually have like an edge to them. C'est un drôle d'oiseau, disait le pingouin. C'est c'est un drôle, c'est un drôle. What does that even translate to, man? According to the book, it means it's a funny bird, said the penguin. It's a funny bird, said the penguin. Hey, would you... I'm trying to learn here. Don't turn... When the hell would you ever say that? The tagline on this cassette box reads, 
essential French that you will actually use, so... Where did you get that? Man, this looks like it's 20 years old. Whatever. Écoute et répète. Quand tu traverses le pont, ne tire pas la planche derrière toi. Quand du travi, quand du, quand du travi. Why don't I put it on the next tape? I've been waiting 20 minutes. What's your location? We're at, let's see, it says Harris Beach Campgrounds, uh, just south of Medford. We? Yeah, me and the package. What seems to be the problem? That guy, you know, the one that I thought was following me earlier, he's here. Just relax. If he had any evidence, he would have searched the vehicle by now. So you just want me to play along and act like we're old chums or something? I want you to get that package across the border by tomorrow night. It's like a 12-hour drive, man. Our client expects it delivered by tomorrow evening. to get the ice chest. I was about to go looking for you. It looks like you made a little friend and he's sitting by our fire. That's Ronald. He's camping up the beach. Come on. He's teaching me how to make s'mores. Why is it called a s'more? That's such a weird name. You put the marshmallow on the stick like this, and then you toast it over the fire. Oh, I need a stick. Here, you can use mine. So, Ronnie, you're camped up the beach? <laughs> well, I'm not exactly camped. Uh, me and the missus have an RV. Guess what? I told him we were going up to Lake Crescent tomorrow, and that's where they're headed. <laughs> what are the odds? That marshmallow looks pretty toasty enough. Hey, why don't you pull her out? Okay, now here's the tricky part. You need to slide it off onto the graham cracker and chocolate. So you're headed up to Fairholme? Yep. Lake Crescent's got some of the best fishing in the Northwest. The rainbow trout up there practically jump on your hook. All you have to do is just reel them in. Mmm. It's like chocolate Little piece of the American dream. Here, take the stick. You have to try one of these. Yeah, I should probably start cooking up the steaks before the sun sets. Jeez, that's a nice car you pulled up in. 69 Firebird with a V8? I don't know. I, I couldn't say it. <laughs> a class like that must have cost you a pretty penny. I just rented it for our road trip. What's this? Vodka? I can see that. Give it to me. I'll put us shots. Oh, none for me. Really? No drinking on the job? Yeah, well, a couple years back, my uh, brother got hit by a drunk driver. I haven't touched this stuff since. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have offered. Oh, nothing to apologize for. Now, you two drink up. Uh, better head back to my wife before it gets dark. Tell her thanks for the s'mores. I hope I get a chance to meet her up at the lake. Oh, I'm sure we'll see you again. She'll love meeting both of you. To our road trip. Yeah. Flies in the Jar includes acting by John Jeffers. Kent Evans, Clara Dunham, Martin James Grappengetter, Lady Zen, Mael Jaillet, Angel Schmeck, Joshua Holloway, Maeva Exposito, David Galitsky, 
Sebastian Stein, David Dykes, and Nathan Feuerberg. Sound mastering by Joshua Holloway, produced by Lady Zen. Written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. Flies in the Jar is made possible by a team of voice actors and sound designers who have volunteered their time. You can listen to us on podcast platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, SMA Podcast, Radio Tulum, Stitchers, and YouTube. If you'd like to support the show and get early access to episodes, go to deepdrag.com and join our Patreon.